Well, let's just briefly talk about the Supreme Court thing. Yeah. Um, uh, just briefly. The Supreme Court has decided it will hear the, uh, the, 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 the case, the question of whether Donald Trump has presidential immunity. Um, I don't know that that in and of itself was absolutely like, maybe you do want to hear it, but it seems to me if you're going to do hear that, you should expedite it. Yeah. <laughs> like they've done with many other uh, rulings uh, uh, so far, because this seems like a big one. Right. I mean, this seems like a pretty, <laughs> Just uh, a little a pretty bit, big yeah. one. Well, bit. Um, and they have, it's going to be decided now. I am going to bet it's going to be the last one that we hear. Yeah. And it's going to be in like the first week of July. Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess it's going to happen. I don't know off the top of my head what day July 3rd is, but whatever the closest day to the day off the weekday is of uh, July 4th, that's when we're going to hear it. And, um, it's unclear that this case is going to be resolved at that point. We should say the DOJ, um, there is a prohibition policy within the DOJ not to uh, pursue indictments um, in the run-up of an election, but they've already done that. This is in the right. court's hands. And my understanding is that Merrick Garland said, like, it's out of our hands. It's up to the court. Um, what, what, like, Aside from the fact that, like, we know who this Supreme Court is, has it had any other sort of like influence? And and, and it's going to have an impact on the election on on one way or another. You're not you're going to have these sort of like um, unresolved questions about the uh, the the president's um, uh, you know criminality, I guess. Um, but has it done anything else? Like, I mean, has it changed anybody's perspective on the Supreme Court? I mean, is it? No. And, uh, you know, look, I got my my law degree from, you know, Law and Order SVU. So take what I say with a grain of salt. But I do. My, my guess is what's going to happen is exactly as you say, it'll come through on the last day of the of the court term, uh, which will be the first part of July, first of July. And what it will do is they're going to say, well, we've decided that there are some situations where a president should have uh, some kind of immunity for official acts. And we're going to send this back down to the trial court to decide whether or not what Donald Trump did qualifies under that, at which point Judge Chutkin will, you know, she may, she may even have a, you know, a, a decision prepared. I would if I were her. Um, but she'll, then it will be appealed and it'll go back up to the appellate court and then then they'll do it. And then the Supreme Court will do it again. All of this is going to take place after meaning that the trial has virtually no chance of happening before the election as to whether or not it changes anybody's mind. You know, I don't know. These people in the, in, in polls say, if he's a convicted felon, I will not vote for him. He might be a convicted felon. There's a trial going on in New York, you know, in what a month. I mean, it's the, the hush money case, right? He might be a convicted felon. He's not going to go to jail for that. I mean, it'll probably be a fine and you know, I don't know what, some kind of probation or something, but he's probably not going to go to, but he will be a convicted felon if they convict him on that case. But I just have never believed that that was, you know, why, you know, what is being convicted really tell you? Because that, you know, Donald Trump will come out and say the jury was a bunch of, you know, right. a bunch of, you know, what, you know, and they, they're a bunch of liberals and it was all rigged. And most of his followers will believe that because they believe anything, apparently, anything that he says. So I don't know that it changed anything. It was, you know, it's depressing to think that the Supreme Court would do this. But, you know, on the other hand, you and I remember, Sam, uh, 2000, when everybody said that the Supreme Court would never interfere with an election, yep, they would yep, not, you yep. know, this is out of their hands. It's not a federal situation. The states have to do it and the Congress has to do it. And the Supreme Court has nothing to do with this. And we know what they did. And once and that, that happened, court and that court was supposedly far more, uh, you know, sort of reasonable. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, and it was as partisan as it gets. It was a partisan breakdown. You had Sandra Day O'Connor, the great moderate who we all, you know, worshipped because she was, you know, the one who kept the balance on the court. She was at a party going, this is terrible, marching in and out because this, the Florida Supreme Court had asked judges in Florida to do the recount. I mean, yeah. I'm not kidding. No, most people don't remember that. 
the recount was being done by actual judges. It wasn't even done by people, you know, some, right. you know, I mean, they actually, and they were sitting there in their robes, counting the, <laughs> counting the ballots. And John Bolton ran in and said, stop the count. I mean, that was the craziness that happened as a result of the Supreme Court doing this. And at, from that point on, I realized, you know, once the court, you know, the court is just another political, you know, branch, just like any other. And it's horrifying that they have a lifetime uh, appointment and basically there's no recourse when whatever they say, and that's what they're doing now. And I won't be surprised if they say presidents do have immunity, except in cases where we say they don't. I mean, I really wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Just, you know, it depends on whether they're a Republican. <laughs> yep. This is, this is our, so, you know, I, let's just put it this way. They're, the court's not going to save us. Right. I, I agree Miller. with that. And, you know, everybody just better wrap their minds around it. This is kind of a nice sideshow. I'm enjoying the impeachment thing with Hunter, as you said, Emma. That's, you know, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, the cases are fascinating because Donald Trump is a corrupt, you know, criminal monster. And, you know, that's a fascinating thing to observe. But it basically has nothing to do with whether or not we're going to, you know, completely turn ourselves into an authoritarian Christian nationalist hellhole. Yeah. <laughs> and On that note, it. Heather. <laughs> <laughs> Always a pleasure. <laughs> I know. I'm such an upper on a Friday Friday afternoon. It's hard to be. It's hard it's to hard have. To be it really is. Days, this is yeah. tough. This is tough. Tough, tough, tough. Yeah. Yeah. Heather Parton, folks can uh, read you uh, <laughs> twice a week at Salon, right? It's twice. And, yeah, three uh, times. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Oh, three times. And, yep. um, and of course, uh, more or less daily at Hullabaloo, uh, digbysblog.blogspot.com. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. It was fun, even though it was not fun. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? All as always. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. Talk to you bye guys bye. later. <laughs>